So good morning. Here we are at the final installment of Living Your Song. And um, I'm, I'm excited to provide this information today. And today we're going to focus a, a little bit more on the idea of offline prospecting and developing strategic partnerships. Uh, the last session when we were talking about singing your song, we were doing it heavily from an online perspective. And um, congratulations to Mr. Stedman for putting together an amazing video uh, about his passion, his purpose, and what he intends to be doing out here to make a difference in the world. Uh, I've had an opportunity in the last couple of weeks to really start trying to talk to people more about what's going on in the world and trying to help them understand that you know, we, we especially had a horrible, horrible tragedy happen uh, just a little less than a week ago. Um, and, you know, the whole idea of these mass shootings and what happened in Las Vegas, you know, that's just a symptom of so much that we have the potential to change out here in the world. Um, you know, seeing people in the streets who are protesting and angry and the chaos and you know, some of us have, have been, went to visit Ferguson, Missouri, not too long after the big riots happened there. And you see the destruction and all the businesses that are burned down. And, you know, at some point in time, we the people have got to understand that we have more power than the people who are in power. I'll say that again, because I don't remember where I saw that quote this week. It might have been somewhere on YouTube, but I really liked it. It was that we, the people, have more power than the people who consider themselves to be in power. And that's really what this whole live your song idea is all about. Getting more people into the space of living in your power, living your song the song in your heart that you probably came here with and you became aware of it through living your life and living your experiences. And so now it's just about remembering what you've gone through in your life, understanding the value that it has and understanding how it positions you to be able to start to make a difference in the lives of others. And Donald, you did, again, a great job with that video. I think you definitely set the stage for, you know, telling your story, uh, explaining what you want to do and, you know, why you want to do it. And there will be other people who understand. Man, the whole relationship thing is, to me, kind of at the heart of the chaos, the violence, and the, the discontent that we're seeing on the planet right now. Because if we were actually living out of love and living in loving relationships, this couldn't continue. So building loving relationships and loving relationships in many cases just probably has a lot to do with honoring and respecting another person's view and perspective and being able to say, hey, I honor and respect that. I may not share it because I have different experiences, but I honor and respect your perspective, and I'm not gonna argue with you about it. Do you understand how much that one shift in how we operate could change the whole discussion in the country? It, Absolutely. It really is huge, and Donald, you have the ability to play in that space. So I just want you to understand how much power you do hold in your hands. And I'm going to be right here anytime you want assistance to be able to figure out how to take that power and put it out here into the communities. You know, I'll keep working with you. I want to see you put that online boot camp together. But I also want to see you getting out here and starting to talk to people because you have the ability. You speak from the heart in a way that is just it's calming. That's what I really loved about your video was there was a calmness that 
that you exude that just comes from you that I think has the ability to calm people down. And that's huge because we've got too many people who are living on the edge and, you know, ready to punch somebody out over something they say. <laughs> we got to stop that madness. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I'm excited to see where you go with all of this. And I'm excited to see where anybody who watches these recordings decides to go with all of this. Um, because anybody who does make the time and listens to this, I believe they are people who have a role to play in helping to spread health, wealth, and peace on the planet. So congratulations, Donald, for being one of those people. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Yes, I'm very passionate about it. I really feel that. So uh, this is exciting, and I'm, I'm willing to work with you to give me ideas of how to put it out there and, and get people to respond back, you know, because they have similar stories. You know, I'm willing to learn and, and continue to grow. That's what we're all about. Uh, absolutely absolutely so um all right so let's jump into some ideas and some material here today and some of the slides that's in this particular um, powerpoint um, are probably similar to some things we've already talked about so we won't have to stay there too long but um i did want to also make make mention because this to me is where i'm really launching what I'm calling We Care Partnerships Network. And so anybody who has a business and gets engaged in one of these causes that we have for health, wealth, and peace out here, and yours definitely is in the arena of peace, but you're also about the health and the wealth. So that's a great example of how you can help to affect the 12 Visions world. But my original concept of the We Care Partnerships Network, and that, that's something you're going to hear me start to talk more about, is to bring business owners together and who want to support these causes that we have that are all around health, wealth, and peace. And I will be putting these businesses up on We Care Partnerships websites and starting to promote them. It's my version of what we would probably call a business alliance kind of situation. And it will also include advertising alliance partners. Um, and we can build relationships with advertisers, media entities out here, and give them some promotion as well. And I'm going to show you some actual examples of how I'm doing that right now. And all of us together can be looking for more of these alliance partners that we can create win-win situations with. The whole idea is that if we find alliance partners who are doing good things, advertising alliance partners, we can help promote them. And especially if we're out here and we become speakers, uh, where we're actually you know, getting to be able to become paid speakers, that's my goal. It may not be everybody's goal because there's two different ways you can get engaged in being a speaker. And I'll probably mention a little more about that too in a bit. But understanding that we also have products and services that business owners can use. So, you know, right now we're putting a lot of focus in, in iClub on iWebatool because that is a product slash service that every business owner can use. So that is a way that, you know, we can engage business, help them to be able to do more with their marketing. But at the same time, if they purchase iWebatool, they're helping us to fund our causes. So that is uh, an, an amazing thing. So just know that I will be putting up um, We Care Partnership web pages again, where we start to honor the businesses that are helping us. And we'll start to do more with um, uh, building these advertising alliances. I actually had done a little bit of this last year when we did Women Leading from the Heart. Hi, Rick. Good to see you. Hey, Rick. <laughs> 
So, but we're gonna we're gonna talk more about this uh, whole idea of building advertising alliances here in just a few minutes. So, anyway, just know that this is where this is where um, you're gonna see me start to provide more promotion for small businesses that understand what we're doing to create the 12 Visions world. And um, we're going to create some powerful relationships around doing that. So it's, uh, it's all good. So again, when, when we're talking about these causes, whether, whether it's Rick and his no hype hope, or whether it's me talking about putting an end to poverty and, and encouraging people to live their song, or now we have, we have Donald coming out with the idea of building loving relationships. Um, you know, it, you have to start to think like a nonprofit would when it comes to the idea of promoting your cause, because that's the whole thing. Help to put it in a context of how the community benefits. How does the world benefit? And that was, that was the only thing that um, I would have loved to have seen in your video, Donald, was just something about making a connection between the chaos we're seeing in the world right now and how building loving relationships and helping to reconnect people at a relationship base is a root cause solution to all of the craziness we're seeing out here. So that's, that's one of the important things when you think like a nonprofit, when you think about your cause is again, think about emotions that people have. We have a lot of scared people out here right now. They're just flat out scared because of things like the, the Vegas shooting. They're scared because of the number of protests they see in the streets. Some of them are so big. They, they're scared because there's just so much anger and so much craziness going on all around. And the media just stays so focused on it. So understand that if you're out here with a message on how to help build better relationships, then you have the ability to be a solution to the fear that they're feeling. So understand that is one of our most powerful tools for helping to engage people. If we can help people feel glad, mad, sad, or scared as we're talking about what we're doing and helping them to see how, how we can connect in one of those emotions, now you're going to draw them in a whole lot more quickly. And you're going to hear me talk a whole lot more uh, about the whole idea of, you know, the amount of chaos in the streets and how living your song is a solution. You know, reconnecting with family and, and healing relationships. I have heard so many people talk about the number of relationships in their lives that have died because of the political craziness the media has created. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, that that's huge. People on Facebook all the time are talking about the number of friends they lost, whether it's Facebook friends or real life friends, because the media keeps causing us to fight about who's right and who's wrong. So that's another place, Donald, if you ever wanted to put a question out there on Facebook to see where you can start to build an audience of people who want to um, heal relationships, put a question out there and say, how many of you have actually lost friends because of this political insanity? Ooh. All right. right. I'll put that out there today. That's, that would be interesting to see and just understand that the people who respond to that are feeling badly about it. So right there, they're feeling sad. So you have a way, or, or they're either sad or angry. <laughs> One of the two, sad or mad. So right yeah. there, you have a way to start a communication about, you know, what can we do? How can we come together and heal these relationships? Or do we really want these people to just stay out of our lives? Because that's where we have so much of the anger and the protesting and the chaos going on. So just know you have the power, Donald, to affect some conversations out here and get people thinking about healing all kinds of relationships. Cause I've heard them say that families have busted up over this too. It's oh yeah. It's it is. It is. It needs.
just stop. And with us, we can do it and make it happen. We just got to stay focused and uh, keep on putting the word out there that we need to come together instead of dividing like everybody and everything else in the world. <laughs> exactly, because that seems to be the media's sole purpose at this point in time is to keep us divided. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that the establishment fears more than anything is people who can bring people together. Yeah. So they don't want people united because, again, the power of we the people is greater than the people who consider themselves to be in power. Yep. I like that phrase. <laughs> I do too. I like that too. <laughs> uh, we have to use that more and more because people don't understand it. They think they have no power, and that's what we need to shift. So, yeah. you know, as you put questions out there like that on Facebook and see who responds, understand if there's people who have lost friendships, lost family members as a result of those relationships just getting destroyed by the political crap, those are people who could become part of your fundraising team and say, hey, I'm on a mission to heal all this mess. Who wants to come with me? Uh, so that, that will be a way by putting those questions out there, how to get them into my mission to help this whole mess out. Exactly. Exactly. So that's your biggest challenge right now, Donald, is to create a list of questions that you can just put out there that are related to the idea of healing relationships. Look for those questions where people are hurting, people are angry, people, you know, are just feeling scared, again, is a good, uh, good thing, and just see if you can find those people who have lost relationships because of the insanity. That will be a big, big thing for you. I know it will. So, and Rick, I know you could get into asking more questions too. Instead of trying to tell people what to do out here or tell people about you're gonna do an online something or another, ask the questions to get the conversations going and then understand that those questions, um, the people who answer those questions, are very likely your prospects. Yeah. yeah. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. You guys, you guys are, you guys are so smart. <laughs> well, go back and listen to last two weeks ago, sing your song because we talk extensively about all of this. So it is really, really important to recognize, you know, that. The more we ask questions and get involved in interviewing other people, the more we will find the people who are looking for us. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's the whole idea. That's the whole way to approach this and bring people together. So, yeah, and, probably, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to go back and listen. And I just wanted to, I want to make damn sure that I attended at least one of these damn sessions. <laughs> I would get on. I, I went to this last appointment and I busted ass to get through that appointment. I hope I didn't make any I hope I didn't make any errors because I wanted to come out here and see your faces at least one damn time. <laughs> well, congratulations for getting here. And like I said, I mean all of this is recorded. You just need to put some time into your mini day schedule so that you can be able to go back and review all of this because I know it will wow. help you with where you are right now. No, I know. I, I know. I just love you guys. I wanted to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you too. And we appreciate you being here. So, yes. you know, and we've talked, so we talked quite a bit last time also about the idea of um, cause, you know, product based prospecting versus cause prospecting. And, you know, product based is fine. I know that Donald has done a great job of uh, promoting the electro mineral enhancement that he works with with Patrick Lindley and you know you guys have built a, a great following of people who really love that product there's nothing wrong with that we've talked a, a lot on our iClub Friday night meetings about travel if you put out there what do people most want to be spending their time doing it's traveling so if you put out questions related to travel you will find there's a lot of people who respond. 
well, those are all potential prospects for being able to buy the travel membership from us. But we're trying to shift and, and make sure we got two different ways to approach whatever we're selling. And one is product, but the other is, you know, sharing your why, sharing your mission. Because here's the thing that I know, and I, I said this to a group of people this week, and they agreed wholeheartedly with me. I still get several hundred dollars a month that drops into my checking account religiously every month because of work I did in bringing people to Legal Shield 15 and 16 years ago. And, you know, and I have, I've only sold a couple memberships in the past uh, few months, but I still religiously get that money. Why? Because when Don and I were involved with Legal Shield in the early days, we recruited a team who were all small business owners who were passionate about helping other small business owners get started up. They all had the same mission. They all had the same purpose that we had, and they have stuck with us. Now, I will tell you that a lot of them are not active at this point in time, but they all value the products enough that they have stayed with it for 15, 16 years. How often do you hear of somebody other than a big, you know, somebody who's, who made it big in network marketing? How much do you hear of little guys who are, you know, doing average in network marketing that have kept a team together for 15 years? There's not, not too often. Not too often, exactly. So that's what I learned early on was that when you're building a team, if you can find people who've got a similar mission as you do, and bring them into the team with you to, as Donald and I were talking about earlier, we're doing joint fundraising. And, you know, I mean, Rick, I know that where you're going is very much in the space of, you know, you could be a pastor of your own church or whatever, and you've talked about some of that before. I also know that um, you know, there is somebody who's doing an online church right now that could very easily have outlying locations and other people who become part of that effort. So, you know, churches fundraise all the time. Understand that you have a tool, whether it's iClub or Legal Shield or, you know, Longevity or any other network marketing program you might ever stick your feet into. You have the ability to put this in the framework of fundraising. And Donald, I heard you start to do that in your video. So congratulations, you're catching on. This is not about traditional nonprofit kind of stuff that, that the C of U has done where you're just asking people to dump money into a black hole. This is fundraising with value by using products and services that have value, which allows people to be able to create a win-win with you because they're helping to find your mission. And if you can figure out what theirs is, which is exactly what I can picture you doing, Rick, you're all about helping them figure out their essence. So help yeah. them figure out their essence, put them in your team and help them create funds to do it. That's yeah. what we're talking about. Absolutely. Yep. So have your mission and purpose as a front to get them to the ending where you want them to be anyway. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to talk a little bit more today about the idea of networking out here face to face. You know, the last session we talked a lot about networking online, you know, using your website, using your videos and the idea of posing these questions to see who responds to some emotional ideas and you know understand that those are people you want to spend more time talking to either on the phone or you know having a you know it could be a private message conversation on facebook whatever but do that but when we're talking about live networking we all need to be doing more of this and, you know, my better half this week reminded me of some of this. Um, you know, there's been some networking events out here that I wasn't sure I wanted to go to, but 
when you start to think about who are the people you're looking for, um, he actually was right on target for one of our target markets. So, you know, not all networking is created equal. And, you know, there's a lot of networking events you could go to and feel like you, you didn't meet a soul that was in the right space. Allow your intuition to play a role, for one. And don't go forget about going to meetup.com because meetup.com has literally hundreds of places that you can go and network and meet other people. We here in Raleigh have ridiculous numbers of meetup groups that have some very significant um, networking opportunities. And, you know, the one that we went to this week that I was actually surprised by some of the connections I made um, happens to be a lot of young people that show up to it. So, you know, that was a key for me because a lot of our young people are very dissatisfied with what's going on in the world. Um, and a lot of, and so when I start, I go out and I talk about being a social entrepreneur. That's my thing is when I'm talking about living your song, I'm really talking about social entrepreneurship. When I meet some of these young people and I start talking about the idea of creating a business that also, a for-profit business that also has a social mission, some of them get really excited about that. Um, now, the other thing was Don and I started having fun. You know, we have our little um, stress pendants here that we've got where we can actually now muscle test people and show them how your thoughts affect your body. We can show them how your cell phone is radiating your brain. We can show them these different things using this little tool and the patch that we have in the cell phone. And so we had a young guy the other day who was getting totally excited. He's like, I knew energy was real. I knew it had an effect on us. Why doesn't anybody believe this? Really? <laughs> so, you know, that was it. But he was young and he was excited. And, you know, I fully expect we will get to, um, to talk with him some more and work with him some more. He gave me his phone number right away and said, yes, I want to come meet with you guys. So... Those are, those are the things is just understand that we're looking for different places to go and meet the right people, people who will resonate with our mission. And, you know, Meetup has those kinds of places. You can find people with a mission on Facebook. Look for groups that are related to your mission. Um, look, and, and Donald made a really good remark last night, which he was right on target. If you find Facebook groups who have a similar mission as yours and you become a member of it, some of them, and I saw this twice this week, some of them will actually allow you to do a Facebook Live in their group where you can be sharing educational information. You can't go out usually and direct recruit anybody, but if you've got a freebie to offer, like what Rick was trying to do the other day, offering some kind of a free session or something, you got a freebie to offer, you could do a Facebook Live in some of those groups and be attracting people. So LinkedIn has similar groups. Don't waste your time hanging out with people who don't care about your cause. That's a biggie, a yeah. real biggie. <laughs> So, you know, we can try to convince people, and sometimes we will have the ability to do that, but, you know, not always. <laughs> so these are all things to think about, but, you know, the meetup, I can't, I can't stress enough, and it's just amazing what you can do out there. In fact, let's see, I know I've got, yeah. So here, just to kind of let you understand the, the next step that I'm doing is because of some of the, the, the responses I've gotten from Facebook recently, when I put out my question, you know, this is, this is a meetup group that we're doing here with several different people um, who are, you can see, we got the 12 Visions logo back here. So these are all people that we've got in our core group that are out here with the 12 visions in mind. And so now, twice a month, we're doing this as a way to explain to people how we're making all the people wealthy, including the poor, 
and giving them the opportunity to become part of our one of our fundraising teams. We're targeting a lot of small business owners with this, but I want you to see this. We have 171 people we reach every time we go out with an email to this group. These oh, are wow. all people wow. that found our group and are interested in what we're doing. So we found a, a free conference room out in RTP that we're able to use. And so twice a month now we're doing this. Here's the other thing I want you to understand that we came up with finally, and I'm so excited about this because I had been working on this idea about 10 years ago with a close friend of mine, but now feels like the right time. So what we did with this presentation was we explained to people about what we're doing, working in the low income communities. We explained how we're using iClub as a teaching tool because people can actually go into business for themselves for just five bucks. And we invited them to become part of the iClub team where they could invest in some people. So if they become part of the team and they like what we're doing and we're working with low income people, they could choose to invest $5 in some of the people that we're working on teaching so that they come into the iClub team and now we can work on helping them to sell those products. So that's what we're starting to put out here as another piece of this idea is if you want to make a difference in the community, if you want to end the violence, the chaos, and the, the you know, just the anger that's out here, start investing in some of these low income people. We're going to do the vetting process through my class I teach. Find the ones who are actually settled enough and ready to make a commitment to work on learning some basic sales and marketing skills. And if you'll just put out the five bucks or the 25 bucks to bring them into your team, now we can work with those people, help teach them, and that person will get a return on their investment. Because as that person starts to make sales, the person who invested in them is going to make money too. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a win-win. I have been looking for a way to be able to bridge the gap between the people who have money and the people who don't. And I think this is a huge key to it because people want to help in the community. There's lots of people out here who are donating money into the community all the time. But what I'm trying to help on teach them is there's too many of those charities that are just giving out fish and they're yeah. not teaching people to fish. That's it. So that's the whole idea is we're giving them an opportunity to invest in people where we're teaching them to fish. So they are truly going to be making a difference in the community. Right. Right. I love that, Shan. <clears throat> okay. So yeah. that's, that's huge. And you can see this is on meetup.com and you know, there is so many groups on Meetup that you can get engaged with out here. You don't have to have your own Meetup group. Go to Meetups in your community that are in alignment with what you're trying to do. There could be spiritual groups. There could be healing yeah. groups. There yeah. could be small business groups. <laughs> They're out there. I'm gonna co I'm gonna ha do a com have a commitment and do this, Shan, because you've been telling me about these meetup groups and it's gold. It's a gold mine, like you said. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. gonna put myself out there more and start regularly going to one of these meetings. I've been saying this forever, and now it's time <laughs> to be. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> Take action. Take action. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping to inspire with this whole program that we've been recording is people taking action. We can't, we can't exert that whole idea of we the people has more power than the people who think they're in power, but we're all sitting on it. <laughs> it's time to get up and do something with it. So, you know, so here's, here's, um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the processes that I've created and you guys got this worksheet in your email this morning. I might've sent it to you previously, Rick, I'm not sure, but I have a process that I've created called the Drake process. 
And what it is really, and I, it took me a while to realize this, but it's really a power thinking tool. Okay? So, you know, if you go out to a place, I'm going to show you the, the worksheet just in case you haven't looked at it in just a second. But it, this is a way where you can do some research, pick out two or three meetings to visit, use your cause in your introduction when you meet people. I found that, again, using the idea that I'm out here creating social entrepreneurs, a lot of people have heard that term and they understand it better than me talking about living your song. So, you know, when I talk about social entrepreneurs, people, they like that. They get excited. And so that's what you're looking for is anyone that gets jazzed up about what you're doing. Uh, is anyone asking you to meet with them? You know, think attraction when you're out here in these live networking places as well as when you're online. Think attraction. That's what we want people to do is attract so that is that is a huge piece. So let me go find my drape if I can. Ah, where is it? Uh, right there. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so you all have, and anybody who takes this program in the future will have this worksheet. And this is a very powerful goal setting worksheet. Few people have really understood the power of it, but again, it's designed to set you up to attract to you what you want and to see who the people are that are attracted to you so you can focus on them. Instead of us going out and trying to chase down people, it's more about who can we attract. So this is a goal setting process that I created largely because I got really sick and tired of the fact that a lot of traditional goal setting did not work very well for me. So, you know, the DRAPE um, is an acronym. It's about getting clear about the details of what you want. Um, the R is getting clear about the reasons for why you want it. The A is to plan and execute your first three steps of activity. P is to monitor your progress. Do a plan, do, review to see what's working for you and what isn't. And E is all about the emotion. Practice feeling the emotion you'll feel when you attain your goal. That's what creates the attraction. Getting into that emotion that good feeling, that gratitude, that happiness, that joy, that's how you pull people to you that you want to be helping. So this is a, a huge piece. And so I kind of give uh, a little bit of instruction here. And I'm going to go just right to the, the worksheet. So if you haven't looked at this, I really want you to, to think about it because it really is um, a powerful little tool. So you start by writing the goal script, which is really just a vision of what you want, but write it in past tense like it's already happened. Don't okay. forget to include details, your reasons for doing it, and the emotions you feel now that it's happened. This is huge for setting up that attraction energy. So don't be afraid to write it this way. And to take uh, advice from KT, write it in blue ink. Don't yeah. go typing it. Write yeah. it in blue ink because that was, blue ink will help to create new neural pathways in the brain that will help to encourage you forward faster. And then this is, this is probably the most critical part of this whole thing because so many people do not go forward with activity because they don't know all the steps. That is the biggest problem we have with our goal setting processes. And when we're being really creative, it can be a difficulty in our power thinking processes. We might know what our end vision is, but we don't know all the steps to get there. So this part of the worksheet is designed to take out the pieces that you don't know and set them aside. And just say, you know what, I'm not going to continue to delay my activity just because I don't know all the steps. Instead, I'm going to write here, what are the things I know how to do right now? 
and I'm going to write the things over here that I don't know how to do right now. And then I'm going to forget about these because I've already told my subconscious mind that I don't know how to do these things. And I'm going to let it go to work on figuring it out for me. Just focus on the things you know how to do right now to move you forward. And then pick one, two, or three things that you know you can do right now. And get those two or three things due dates and get them done. If you never do that, you never go forward. And too many people use not knowing how to do everything as excuse to not go forward. Then when you do those action steps, you're wanting to look at what are the results you got of those action steps. What are the results? Because if you put out some action steps and all you got was doors slamming in your face, that's what I call flat forehead syndrome. And you don't want to keep going down that path. But if any of the activities you did, you got encouragement, you got people showing up to help you, you got invitations to go speak somewhere, that's a result that says you're in alignment with your path, my friend, and keep running. Mm. This is where people don't understand. They keep trying to force something to happen. And one of the main reasons that it doesn't happen is because it's not in alignment with your spirit, not in alignment with what your heart song is. It's not in alignment with what you committed to do. So if you're getting the door slamming in your face, stop going down those paths and start getting focused on finding the activity where the doors open. Big piece of this is also to be able to remember to keep a log of new ideas and opportunities that come to you. You'll be shocked at how things show up out of the blue when you're on the right, uh, on the right path or when you're open to new ideas to put you on the right path. So it's really important to be open to keep, keep the focus off the things that you don't know how to do and be able to keep a log of new ideas and opportunities to try out. One of the biggest mistakes we often make is when we get a new idea, we really need to, tr to write it down. We really need to write it down and just hold on to it, even if we don't have time to analyze it, keep a log. Because here's the thing, I'm sure you guys know who Taylor Swift is, and she has made the remark that when she gets a new idea for a song, she only has about five minutes to be able to write it down before she loses the idea. Now, not writing down a song idea, I think that might actually cost her Millions of dollars, don't you think? So understand, you never know what idea that comes to you might be a million dollar idea. And it might be exactly the piece or the key that you need that takes your vision forward in a huge way. One of the keys to think of when, when, when you're on this path, and I am so guilty of this, Maybe some of you will resonate with this too, but it's really interesting to me how new ideas that come to me, I often reject them at first. I often reject them because they just feel like they're outside of where I'm trying to go, or they feel like they're just not quite in the space I want to be in. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, if that idea comes back again, and again, through different people, through different avenues, sometimes we need to shut our mouths and go, okay, okay, I need to look at this and see what I need to do with it. Because if something keeps coming back, there's a reason for that. And sometimes it's just us being stubborn in terms of thinking we got all the answers and we forget that quite honestly, we had this whole don't know list of how we didn't know how we were going to do this, didn't know how we were going to do that. These ideas, even though they may seem outside the box, or somebody shows up with some information for you, or you hear something on the radio, you see something on the TV that kind of resonates, but you're still not quite sure you understand it, 
just understand these can be part of your subconscious mind working to bring you answers to what you don't know. Got That's you. one of the most important things you can understand about this process. So, powerful stuff, Cheyenne. That was very powerful. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a tool that if you learn how to use this, and what I oftentimes do, and actually I'm getting ready to utilize this again for myself right now because I keep getting messages that, from people that I need to look on getting on a paid speaker circuit. And I don't, you know, I've, I've actually got a book I'm reading on steps to do that. So now I've got to start using this myself to say, okay, here's my vision for what I want to do to be a paid speaker. Here's the things I know how to do. Here's the things I don't know how to do. Here's the three things I know I can do now. And then look to see what the results are of those activities. And just understand that as you figure out where the doors are opening versus where they're not, now on another week when you come back to this worksheet, you write your new vision incorporating what seems to be working for you. Stop beating your head on the brick wall. That's the main story here. You've been telling me that for two years. <laughs> you sure it's just two? <laughs> Probably not. I got a flat forehead. My forehead keeps getting flatter. <laughs> it's typical, my friend. It's typical. <laughs> Trust me, I've had more migraine headaches over the last decade. <laughs> <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> uh, well, I'll cancel that. They've never been migraines, but definitely I've had the flat forehead uh, syndrome right. going on in a big way. So just understand that's the purpose of this tool is to to be able to help you to be able to, um, you know, again, pick out two or three activities, pick out two or three meetings to visit and just go and see what kind of results you get. Yeah. Let those results guide your activity for the following week. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. So well, I, I'll get back there and take a look at that worksheet because that will be good even for my, you know, uh, benefit uh, working on my own self, Stan. I, yeah. I, you know, we don't write down our goals. I mean, it's more or less in your head, but if you actually write it down and track it, the results that's manifesting. Wow. Ab absolutely. And that's the whole purpose of that worksheet is for you to move your goals forward. <laughs> yes. It's a very different form of goal setting. I've never seen anybody else come up with what I put together. And I did it because I knew that I knew so many creative people who may not know all the steps to get to where they're going. And so this honors the creative process by keeping you in motion, keeping you in activity, but giving you permission to not worry about the fact that you don't know all the steps to get there. That makes sense? Yes. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit here now about the whole idea of strategic alliances, which to me is the key to stress less prospecting. This is another whole component that most people uh, don't even understand the power of it. And so here are my three favorite types of alliances. Um, actually, actually, I forgot. I've got a fourth one written in my ebook. So I want you to understand you both also have a copy of my ebook. So let me just show you. Let's see. No, it's this. Yeah. So let me show you this. So you all have a copy of this ebook in your email right now. So it's called the Consultant's Guide to Profitable Partnering: More Clients, More Sales. And I wrote this, ah, more than ten years ago. Uh, but you've got it, and I encourage you to read it. It's not a real long read. Um, it's twenty pages long, so it's not that long. But it will give you a little more detail about some of the things that I'm talking about here today. And so, you know, in here, you're going to see where I talk about nonprofits, I talk about media entities, 
and I talk about staffing companies as, as key strategic alliances to help you in your journey of doing whatever your mission is. Um, so let me go on to the next, yeah. So nonprofits and churches. I'm doing a lot of this right now. Um, I am working more and more with finding small nonprofits who are looking for additional income streams. Um, I've got a gal here in Raleigh who has a nonprofit that is all about serving women who have come out of prison. She has a very hard time finding people who really want to support that cause, but for her, it's a very, very meaningful cause. And so what she's done is she has created, I mean, she had a ton of relationship with ministers and pastors of churches. And so she went to those church leaders who knew what her nonprofit was about, and she has gotten their permission. She's booking their travel. That's how she is funding her nonprofit right now and partnering with churches all over the place. She's booking the travel and she's getting the commission. She has made $350 in the past six months just by booking travel for all these other pastors. So it's her relationship with them that's allowing her to use the iClub Biz to be able to put money in there to help her to keep working on helping um, these women who have come out of prison. So understand, uh, you know, a next step for her that I've talked to her about, and she, she knows that she's probably going to try to go there eventually. Now that she's got the pastors who have seen what the travel program is all about, she has the option to talk to those pastors about becoming part of the iClub team and sharing the travel program with other people. And she can show them how much money she's made and be able to explain to them this is another income stream that your church could possibly utilize. So now, by her showing all these pastors how to make money by booking travel and how to make money by inviting other people into iClub, she's now pro she's taking and helping to fund her nonprofit by partnering with churches. Wow. Do you understand how powerful that is? Yeah. <laughs> so not to mention, I want you to hear this too, because a lot of people don't understand this. Many churches have career and job ministries. And these are people who are unemployed. They're also in many places, people who want to help a cause and they need to make money. So guess what? You can talk to these people about becoming part of whatever networking team you're in. Right now, we're kind of focused on the iClub, but you can explain to them how by getting engaged in becoming part of your fundraising team that's about helping you to bring hope to the world or about helping you to bring, um, you know, healed relationships to the world, now, if they want to be part of that cause, they become part of your team. You show them how to make money with iClub, and at the same time, they're helping to fund you. In mm -hmm. effect, they become paid fundraisers. And in the process, you have the ability to help coach them to figure out what their cause is all about. Maybe it's an extension of yours. Maybe they have another cause that they're important, excited about, and you can be helping them to build funds through iClub that helps them to fund their cause. That's called being a win-win developer and using a business model such as iClub to solve community-based problems instead of relying on government-funded charity. Right. Is part of moving towards the 12 visions world. And understand this, iClub used to do this. I don't know that they do anymore, but because they have created it where for just $5 you can become part of the team, there's no reason that nonprofits can't become a rep. 
you know? So a nonprofit could choose to partner with you and allow you to help build, uh, you know, an income for them. And as you're helping them to build an income, are you building one for yourself? Absolutely. <laughs> That's the power of the network marketing business model that nobody understands. This is We're how I intend to help change people's understanding of what network marketing really can be. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Wow. It is. It is. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. And so, yeah. So understand there's a lot of unemployed uh, people. There's a lot of career ministry in churches. That is a reason to <laughs> try to look into the community and see what's going on. So right. here's another form of strategic alliances. And this is media entities and other promoters, whether it's print media, somebody who's producing magazines, flyers, or postcards, whether it's internet radio. Now, of course, you can try traditional radio, but most of them are pretty big conglomerates that don't necessarily care a lot about partnering with small guys like us. But understand internet radio and things like blog talk radio, things of that nature are becoming huge out here. And if you can find ways to partner with people who have an internet radio station, who are doing things on blog talk radio, who are doing podcasts, find ways to partner with them. Bring them into your team so that you can help them build another income stream while at the same time you're building your own. Mm -hmm. People wow. who run expos and events. Anyone with an email list or a huge social media following who is willing to promote you and your cause, who understands your cause and wants to work with you. You know, these are all entities you can partner with and be able to share commissions earned with them. If you can get them into your team, the sharing happens automatically through the structure of the network marketing. But if somebody's kind of nervous about being in a network marketing program, well, you can stair step them into it by offering to share commissions on anything you make through the publicity they do with you. It's all about performance-based pay. We've all heard about that before, and we understand that's part of honest ethical business. So let me go back here and just show you some of what I'm doing in this arena because um, I'm, you know, this isn't a real pretty page, but it's actually, this is the, um, this is the uh, key to it. Black Wall Street Radio. That's the domain name. And I have a friend who owns this radio station, internet radio station, and he's going to let me do an hour long program every week talking about all these different concepts that in many cases the uh you know the the african-american community knows nothing about they don't know about building residual income in many cases they don't know about the truth about our health and our wellness and how it's being hidden from them uh, i have a whole book that's all about how um, the, the African-American community has been lied to and told that all their illnesses are genetic. They're not. They're nutritional. Exactly. So, you know, I'm going to bring all this information out here, and I'm going to embed in the information education to bring people to iClub, Longevity, and Legal Shield, and, oh, probably the Advantage card, too. So, uh, you know, because the guy who owns Black Wall Street Radio is in my iClub team. He's going to be in my Longevity team, and he's going to be in my Legal Shield team. So we can do promotions of all kinds of any of these programs on his radio station. He's getting ten to 15,000 hits on the station every week. Wow. So... That's what I'm talking about, about partnering and looking to see who you can partner with out there. This is a magazine that um, I'm friends with the owner of this. And he's actually written articles about me twice in this magazine. 
And now he is part of the iClub team. He is also part of the um, Legal Shield team. So he let me write an article in his magazine about identity theft. We need, probably should be trying to promote that more now since the big Equifax breach happened. But this is a way you can partner with getting the word out to more people. And, you know, if any, as, as leads come through this magazine, I'm going to write that business in his name and I get paid too. So partnering and building strategic alliances like this is absolutely huge. You need to understand, you know, how all of that works. So that's why I encourage you to go ahead and read um, my, you know, profitable partnering book because it does, it kind of reinforces this thing that we're talking about. So, um, you know, understand lots of people out here that you could be partnering with and people are looking more and more for ways to be able to put their, put the, you know, put, create multiple streams of income because they're understanding you never know when one of them's going to disappear. Woo, absolutely. So and this is another arena that I've worked with in the past. And I'm, I'm kind of evaluating right now some potential places to do some of this. But understand that staffing companies are another huge potential strategic partner that any of us could consider working with. Because staffing companies see people all day, every day, that are looking for work. And some may be appropriate for a training class you're doing. In fact, I've talked to um, staffing companies about letting me do a training class on site for them for free as a way to reach people that need what we've got. Rick, that is totally something you could be doing. Hopefully you're still there. It looks like you muted out. But um, hopefully uh, that is something he, you could be doing in a big way is offering free hope classes on site at staffing companies and seeing who shows up for that. Um, you know, you may find people who want to become a professional fundraiser, be part of one of your teams. Sometimes a specific recruiter can refer people to you. Sometimes you can do free seminars at their location. You know, some may let you connect to their website. So these are all ways that we can build alliances where we can create win-win situations that help us and help them mm. okay makes sense doesn't it shan <laughs> it does and we're not we're not thinking this way enough you know this kind of collaboration is huge <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow um you know those are the biggies that i just wanted everybody to hear about and to understand um because they really are big in in terms of how we can make prospecting easier for ourselves that's the whole idea is you know make prospecting easier for us and provide a new value to somebody else that's that's huge that Think is about huge. It and yeah, that's read, read that book because i'm going to share that ebook with anybody again who decides to go through this training and who can understand what we're talking about here. So um, I'm trying to think if there is somewhere, ah, yes, actually the PowerPoint I created the other day on teaching people to fish, I should have brought up that PowerPoint. And actually, I think I will do that right now because it will prove out kind of the last piece of what I really want to share with you guys as part of this class. Um, because it is important, and I'm trying to remember where I put it, documents. I think it's in my We Care folder, I hope. <laughs> uh, hopefully right here. Because again, yes, there it is. Because again, this is, ah, okay, I mean, it might not open. 
open the way I want it to. Yep. Okay, so we're going to dump out of this. And oh, and I forgot, this is another type of strategic alliance. Yes, I'm glad I actually put this up here. I put these up here for a reason, then sometimes I forget why I did it. Um, this is another strategic alliance. And this is, some of you have met Craig Springer, um, and he has this store at the Fairgrounds Flea Market every weekend called Stella's Pet Stuff. Well, we are getting ready to set up when the fair is over here in North Carolina uh, in October, and he goes back to setting up his store in November. Don and I are going to have a We Care Partnership partner in the store. And so this is another, and actually this is a great segue into the next piece I wanted to explain. This is another way to build strategic alliances and help people develop another stream of income. So Craig is part of my iClub team. He's also part of my Longevity team. He wants to be part of the Legal Shield team. So we're gonna have a table in his store where he gets traffic there. All, all weekend, every weekend. These are people that we can engage with and be able to not only sell them some new products, but also because Craig's in the team, we're gonna be helping him build another income stream. So, you know, it's kind of like what, what we did, Donald, before when we were working with the, um, goodness, Rick, you're making noise over there. <laughs> All right, I silence that for a sec. But it's kind of like what we did before, Donald, when we were getting people to sign TVP petitions, right? We went out to a flea market because that's where the people were, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but you were paying for your own table when you were there. And um, uh, so when you had your own table, you were paying for it. Well, what we're doing, instead of paying for a table at the fairgrounds flea market, we're partnering with Craig, we're using his space, but we're making sure that he's in the team so he can make money too. Ah. All right? Got so that's, and in this situation, this is where I want to try to bring up that other PowerPoint. Let's see. Ah, so if I go back, no, that ain't it. Ah, where is... All right, I'm trying to bring up, uh, uh-oh, my screen sharing paused. How'd that happen? Uh-oh. Resume share. Okay. All right. So um, now it says resume share, but it ain't. There it goes. Okay. So we're back here. But I'm trying to bring up this other document because it would so help me. Ah. And I don't know if this is going to work. Maybe it will. Let's try it again. It would so help me to show you this other piece, but I can't. It's got to come. Ah, here it is. Okay. So this is the this is this is the PowerPoint. You know, it's actually a PDF that I created that I'm doing with that meetup group. And this is where I'm explaining to people about the power of teaching people to fish and. Donald, you know, you, you probably remember some of these pictures because you were there with us in Ferguson where we saw these things, right? Yeah. So I've incorporated that right into our, um, into our uh, presentations explaining, you know, that we have the ability to make sure Ferguson's don't happen anymore. So uh, I'm teaching people about the cash flow quadrant and why that's important for people to become more like business owners but I'm trying to get to, there we go. So this is the other component that I want you to understand that I'm doing differently than what other people in any kind of network marketing does. And it's really important in terms of understanding how you can build these alliances to help you fund your cause. So, you know, we, we're building teams that focus on people's natural skills and talents. Some people have a real natural ability to be a coach. Quite honestly, Donald, you've got, you are unique in that you are pretty good at being able to do all three of these. You're pretty good at being a coach. You're pretty good at being a connector. 
you're pretty good at being a consultant. So the coach is the one who keeps people moving, keeps them in activity. The connector is the one who connects with people. They build relationships and they, um, they're prospectors. They're bringing people to the table who could possibly help you find the prospects you're looking for. That's what we were talking about. We're talking about being uh, in a relationship with Craig in his store. Craig's being the connector for us. He doesn't want to be a consultant. He doesn't want to teach anybody about the products we're selling. He has no desire to teach anybody about a web tool. He doesn't want to teach anybody about the health products. We even have health products for pets. So that's one of the reasons it makes sense for us to be in his store. We've got health products for pets. So we're going to, you know, work on talking to people about their pets' products. So uh -huh. that's, um, you know, but we're going to play consultant in the store. And Craig's going to be the connector. He's allowing us access to the people who come to his store. Wow. All right. So yeah. when, you, when you build your teams with making sure you've got a coach, making sure you've got somebody who can generate leads, and then making sure you've got people who are passionate about the products and services you're selling. Now, when you build those together in your network marketing team, you're taking advantage of people's natural skills and talents and getting them working together where everybody can make some money on a sale. And the network marketing structure, the direct sales structure, allows us to build those teams where everybody gets paid. Okay. Make sense? Yes, it does. So right now, um, as an example, if me, you know, if I'm considered the coach for iClub right now and Craig is playing the connector, he's underneath me and his store is underneath me and he's providing leads. Now all I've got to do is bring some people in under him. And actually I've got some people under him who will probably become consultants in the store. Now you've got me with him underneath me and you've got people who can explain products underneath him whenever a sale is made here we're all getting paid but everybody did the thing they're best at doing mm -hmm. this is where a lot of people who get excited about the vision of network marketing they get stuck because so many people don't know how to find prospects. They don't know how to find prospects. So if they can build relationships or be part of a team where there's people who already can generate the leads, whether it's Craig, whether it's, you know, an internet radio station like Black Wall Street Radio, whether it's a magazine, it doesn't matter. Find ways to build those relationships with lead generators yes. and then just allow people to be teachers and consultants about the products. Yes. That's it. We all have certain skills and some people are better at other things than some people. And, you know, but all of the skills add to a benefit, especially when you're with a team. That's working. it. And I want you to I want you to understand this because my heart is so in this space. And I pray that Jill will eventually watch these videos. I know she's tied up and, and having her birthday today and all of that, and that's all awesome. Uh, but this is where my my concern is in terms of the clubhouses. We're trying to teach people how to become connectors to reach out and find other people to bring them into clubhouses. Yeah. The majority of the population is not comfortable doing that. I know. There's more people who are willing to tell their story. There's more people who are willing to teach people about what Neo think 12 visions, et cetera, et cetera is, but they're not comfortable going out there and doing the prospect. I know, I know. So that's why we have to find ways to create lead generation 
and then let the people in the clubhouses be the teachers, the consultants that help to explain the power of Neothink and 12 Visions. Ah, uh, I like that. That's, yeah. that's what's missing. And of course, the other part of it is, and I've seen Jill do some of this, but other people don't understand how to do this. You can use this same process that I've been explaining through this video series to be able, I mean, there's everybody who's in a clubhouse could be out there figuring out what is their piece of the super puzzle. You know, if you go back and read Miss Annabelle, there were people in the super puzzle who were all about building relationships. Yep. So you have a piece of that super puzzle. So now, as people start to put out there their story and take on a role of a piece of that super puzzle that is their story, which is exactly what you did, now, as you go out there and ask questions about, you know, Who's lost a relationship because of, you know, this political fighting? Or who lost a parent too early before they had an opportunity to reconcile with them? You know, you've got questions like that that you could be putting out there that can become part of you building your iClub team or whatever team you're part of. But they also could become potential prospects. Yeah. Clubhouse. Ah, I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on working on this, Shan, because I, you know, I, I like that. I like, you know, I like that because you're not directly going at them with something trying to shove your product down their throat. You have something, a mission, a purpose, where you're using that to benefit them in a way, but then having a fundraising tool to make them more money, regardless of what they're doing in life. But if they want to do a similar mission, well, we can hook them up with that too. Teach them how to build the funds. So I love that because you're having a front to bring them to helping them build business where it's helping you and benefiting everything. Exactly. That's it. And, and you know, this, this concept to me is one of the most powerful marketing concepts. And nobody ever... Mm -hmm have I seen come up with this? But this is whether you're trying to recruit people into a clubhouse or you're trying to recruit them into an iClub or a, you know, any other program out here. If we start thinking in terms of focusing on somebody's natural skills instead of trying to force them into a space that they're not comfortable working in. That is the number one problem I have seen with every network marketing company the number one problem I have seen in clubhouses, NeoThink, TVP, whatever, is the number of people who are afraid it is not part of their natural skill set to be a connector, a prospector, a relationship builder. That's the missing piece. So yes. That's why we have to learn how to attract online how to talk about these things that other people will get excited about when we're out here networking. And this is how, and, and we have to build teams where you build those strategic alliances with people who are connectors, who have prospects, and then allow people who are better being a teacher or a consultant to do their thing, and then allow people to make that money together. That's the key. To living our song that's the key to what we all need to be doing out here and it's not been understood and I pray that this energy we've been working on building here uh, in in this video series will be a catalyst to help more people be able to engage in entrepreneurial activity building money that allows them to be do and have all that they want and to allow us to be able to fuel the movement that is so critical out here whether you call it living your song whether you call it hope whether you call it uh 12 visions world or a civilization of the universe or neo or whatever we're all doing 
the same thing. We're working on bringing health, wealth, and peace to the planet. And we all have a special role to play in that. Yes, Shan, that is wonderful. Wow, very powerful. And that's exactly the link to the to the piece of the puzzle that we just need to, you know, click in place. And, and it would make this whole world such a better place. And, you know, people are starting to wake up now because like Cameron, because uh, uh, Richard, we've been talking to him. I haven't seen him do a video. Well, all of a sudden he's going live. Mm -hmm. so, so now people are wanting to, you know, so this whole momentum and mission is it's inspiring people where, you know, they're wanting to put their face out there and, and speak from the heart. So it's starting and, you know, it's going to just get better and better as we continue to roll this out. It, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. And you're absolutely right. Um, you know, more people are waking up, more people are understanding that, you know, we have the power. Gosh, right. keep saying that. We the people have more power than those right. who think they are in power. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what they don't want you to know. <laughs> that's it. That's totally it. <laughs> so that's why, you know, um, as I kind of wrap this up and close this out, um, you know, I, I just, I invite you to be part of the movement, to encourage people to go through these three videos that are out there on YouTube. Right okay. now, they're still in the public domain, uh, but I really want to put it out there and make it available to people who are in our iClub team. I will probably make it available to some other people that maybe join some of our other teams, although, Understand, we've used a lot of concepts in these recordings that are related to the whole 12 Visions movement. And yeah. so those are the people who will understand the most about what we're talking about, uh, because that, that is a huge piece that's in here. But I need people like you and Rick and Jill to bring people to this training if you have found it to be helpful. Yes, so, absolutely. So okay. That, we can fill those gaps. <laughs> I'll promote them. I mean, if you want me to promote, I'll prom just put them out there so they click on it because you know how, you know, I'm getting such a, you know, good amount of people following me. So they watch everything that uh, they're, they're seeing everything. So absolutely, so absolutely. But it's not, <laughs> you know, we got to help them understand that in my opinion, and you can tell me if you share this, but in my opinion, some of this stuff we're talking about has been the missing pieces that need to be used by more people to move all of this forward. If our, if our mission is truly health, wealth, and peace, these are the pieces that people have got to understand and start to work with. Right, right, right. All right, Shan. And and with me working on my mission and this relationship boot camp, I mean, it's just going to inspire everybody to start, you know, thinking of what they can do to help. I mean, you know, it, it's it, it's just a, you know, an energy thing where once one's doing it, everyone will follow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a hold it'll take a hold in people's heads because we want the better world i mean we just have to uh continue to follow good people be around people that are inspiring and uplifting and this whole idea is just wonderful so yeah i will um share it and we'll get this message out there and we'll get everybody participating we're gonna build this and and help the whole world out Absolutely. Because it's a need. It's a need, it, definitely. It, it is. It is. And actually, I just had an idea because, um, uh, you know, I, I mean, I want, I want that video you created, even though it's 13 minutes long, it really didn't feel that long because, <laughs> again, your, your demeanor in, in, is engaging. 
and I think a lot of people will take the time to uh, to listen and to understand what you're talking about. So I really want you to put that into your iWeb tool, and if you need help doing that, I'll be more than happy to help you. Um, because I want that's the iWeb tool page that I want to promote for you, and I'm going to do a a different iWeb tool video for me as well. And I'm going to talk more about, I think, the missing pieces for people being able to live their song. Because what would be helpful to me is if you could pro help me promote that page so okay. that if people want to go through the training, because I'm really thinking about making the training into private links now. You can go on YouTube and take any of your public videos and you can make them private. So these I can make private. And so somebody would have to go through my iWeb tool page to get uh -huh. the private links. And then I would have their email address to send them all of the worksheets and materials that I've sent to you. I got you. Make sense? Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. So yeah. That's the kind of stuff that we need to do to be wow. able to use the iWeb tool. And, you know, and, and you can be doing the same thing. I want you to be creating those videos that focus on specific topics about relationships and healing and, you know, loving relationships. And we can put those on YouTube and you make those private. Uh. And so then when I'm promoting your video, I'm going to be able to, or promoting your iWeb tool page, I'm going to say, hey, if you want to go through Donald's training, you've got to go through his iWeb tool and leave your name and email so he can give you the private YouTube links. Ah, I love that. Yeah, let's get that. Do you want me to take a ride up sometime next week or something? Or can we do this without me coming up or whatever you want? Um, I, I don't I don't know if you have to come, but at the same time, um, if you wanted to, you know, I'll give you the time because I really want to see you get this going. But, you know, I mean, really, the first thing for you to do is to try to make a kind of a um, an outline of what are the topics that you could put into some YouTube videos to call it your relationship boot camp. Boot camp. You're right. OK, I you can know? do I can do that, yeah. And and you might want to refer back to some of your books, like even like Miss Annabelle, and just see what were some of the things they were doing in there. Um, you know, just think about, um, you know, just again, you're you you've created some great scenarios just being who you are, and you probably haven't even thought about the tools, the methods. The methods you use because they're a part of you. That's right. the problem most of us have is we don't understand what what is kind of a part of us and the things that we do without thinking are typically where our superpower lies. So, okay. you know, I loved when you said that you went out in two weeks and got 50 clients for your window washing. Yeah, my and my mom seen that. She seen that. She was amazed by it. Because well, I'm was, amazed by that. <laughs> <laughs> because see what it was. I was in the window. I started it one other time, and then I gave it up because I was trying to become millionaire overnight. But then when my buddy told me to go back into it, I went back and got all the cu customers I had the first time I was in it. So that's how I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, but the thing is, you must have done a good job right from the beginning, or they would not have easily come back to you. Yeah, and they're all still with me today, Shan. They're I believe still. it. I believe it. So, you know, but that's because you're good at building the relationships. So yeah. those are the things you need to think about is, how do you do that? What are the steps that you use in that process? What were the things, you, you have to get into specifics so you yeah. can tell other people what to do in terms of approaching a potential new customer or thinking about the specifics of, you know, okay, so you went back to live with your mom mainly because she asked you to, but 
you had to make some changes to do that. Mm -hmm. so what were those changes and how did you do it in terms of how did you approach your mom differently at that point? How, you know, how did the relationship change? How did you change your actions? Those are the specifics you've got to think about that you can put into some short videos and they don't all have to be 13 minutes long, but some of them may be, and some of them may be a little longer. Yeah. That was amazing. Like you said, Shan, I was like, it didn't seem like 13 minutes. It didn't even really seem like that long of a video. It was, I Why? guess. Because, because you were speaking in your passion. Yeah. Wow. When you are speaking in your passion. Time flies. <laughs> that's powerful wow it, it does it just flies by it's like you, you just move into a different time dimension or something it's very very strange but yeah yeah, yeah. wow so, you know you did good but now the next step for you is to start thinking about what are those details what are some of those tangible things that you can tell people to do Tangible things you can tell them to do differently to start healing these relationships. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to start writing it down with a blue pen on piece of paper. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. And if you decide you want to, you know, schedule a day to, to come over here and work on that together, I mean, you know, I'm more than willing to help you. Well, thank you, Shan. Whatever works, whatever is clever, you know, we, you know, whatever is clever, I'm, I'm up for it. So, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, my schedule's pretty flexible. I can plan and do what I really want, really. So, All right. well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Well, I'm going to go down and go ahead and close down this recording. Um, I thank everybody who's taken the time to watch this. And, you know, if you need more help with anything, anybody who watches this recording, these three recordings, I want you to understand the way it's designed is you should watch the first two. There's Find Your Song, there's Sing Your Song, and this one I'm calling Live Your Song. So you should do Find Your Song and Sing Your Song first, and then I will give you some coaching time to help you put all that together and figure out how to create a video that speaks to who you are and what you're here to do. And then you do the Live Your Song video, which is this one here. So that's the, the intention of this. This is how it's meant to kind of come together. And um, again, I thank everybody who has taken the time to invest their time to do this. Um, and I'm here. You know, you can find me on shayannkramer.com. You can reach out to me through Facebook, um, all of these kinds of ways are ways to be able to reach me. I'm here to help make the world of health, wealth, and peace happen. So yes. let's get together and let's make it happen for more people. Thanks for listening. <laughs>